area. And by... Oh, you guys are so crazy! <laughs> <laughs> ha, ha, ha. I think that's as funny today as it first was back in the sizzling 70s. That's right, I'm Dexter Fong, and nothing will make me forget the thrill we had making funny records back then. Yes, my late partner, Hideo Wallbanger, and I were the men of modern comedy. And today, when the satellite net is crammed with the stupid drivel of the hot humorous 100, where can a gone cat like yourself get the laughs that we were making then just for you? What thrilling moments. Well, they're all yours now on a double fun, double deal. Dope humor of the 70s, volumes one and two. Who can forget such modern comedy hits as Cheech Chong's Reuben and the Jets or <laughs> Kong Ress and Wonders Beat the Electrician? Who did you have your arm up when you first sighed to bootleg by the four or five crazy guys or cut a rug to the antics of Hilario Gomez and the Wanderers? Yes, all million sellers plus the fab fire sign together again on this bonus extra. Yes, a rare collection of Phil, 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 and Phil at their hilarious, inscrutable best, if you order now. Oh, God, wouldn't it be great to laugh again and stop bumping into things? Well, bozos, get on it and do it every day. <laughs> now the 70s aren't gone, if you're still smiling, order now. Right Dope Humor Offer Box 69, California. That's Right Dope Humor Offer Box 69, California, now! Well, I think it's similar to a lot of uh, people's experience was being really high in the, around 1970, 71. I forget exactly what year, but listening. For, I think first I heard them on FM radio in New York City, where I live. Uh, WPLJ, uh, which at the time was maybe the greatest rock station ever before it became formatted. It was a free form uh, um, format there and they would play great music with no playlist, just whatever the DJs wanted to play. And they'd also, in between this music, they'd play uh, Firesign Theater records and um, it was just the perfect co uh, comedic sensibility for that state of mind, which even though I stopped taking the drugs, I maintained that state of mind throughout the years. By the way, Mr. Danger, you wouldn't happen to have any Mary Wahaha cigarettes on you, would you? Hell, I haven't even got a script. It's very surrealistic of you, Mr. Danger. Smoking grass is a private affair and doesn't harm anybody, he's told. It's a groovy way of relaxing, opening your senses. Tom is most interested in what he sees. These people, most of them college students, are bright and well-adjusted very sure of themselves and their ability to handle anything. Dreamed about a reaper five feet long. We turned Cloris Leachman on to pot down in, when we were Mexico. down in location, Mexico, <laughs> and she divorced him soon after that and won an Oscar, so yeah. <laughs> there you go. Last picture show is there. You know, there's good drugs, and there's bad drugs, and there's times for using them, and there's times for not using them, and, and hey, hey brother, brother, we're, we're going to use some right now. If you swallow the preceding message, you can apply for further information and free samples from the president's all-night drug abuse council. Kids who get high repeatedly don't want to come down. There's a wholesome abandonment of goals and ambitions. Creativity. It's a known fact that grass increases creativity from 8 to 11 times. In fact, everyone finds that they're more creative stoned than straight. All of us are latent Michelangelo's or Caruso's or Da Vinci's. You get a lot of just people saying to you backstage or something like that, oh man, I was so wasted. When I... and, a, and at a certain time you're thinking to yourself, okay, that's a compliment, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Thank you very much. Yeah, I think that's great. So you were wasted. I'm really interested in that. <laughs> oh, I'm sure it made it a lot better than it really was. It's so, <laughs> it's, it's so culturally bound. Nobody went up to James Joyce and said, oh man, you must have been so wasted when you did that. <laughs> man, you must have been so out of your mind what you did you miss you know? it really just wigs me out you'd be high but not for long if you a viper uh, we we somehow we had such uh, we had a kind of collective 
ego of some kind which allowed us to think that we could just do this. We could just, we just somehow didn't have to obey the rules that everybody helped. We didn't have to put jokes at the end of every sketch. We didn't have to write sketches somehow. We didn't even have to write plays. We, we didn't somehow, have to go on television. Like our job was somehow to invent things. We were going to invent this thing where if we were going to do a record album, okay, we'll spend two weeks worrying about going through the hole to the other side. And if we're making CDs, we'll actually spend the time worrying about this kind of stuff for CD technology or for CD-ROM technology, the kind of stuff we're, we're tending to work on now. And it just got out of hand. What can I say? <laughs> we, we sort of never were able to turn around and say, oh, no, great, we've got to be on Laugh-In. It just sort of never, <laughs> never happened, you know. And here we are. It's disgusting.